Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and it is officially Jover for Marvel Future Revolution. Marvel Future Revolution End of Services Notice. This dropped a couple of days ago. Apologies for not getting to this sooner. I've been consumed by the Diablo 4 early access, but this is pretty huge uh, for Netmarble, and this really, uh, although it doesn't impact MFF directly, you can speculate on it impacting MFF directly or indirectly, um, it really does highlight the difficulties of launching a successful game and as much as we joke about mobile games being a cash grab mobile games just being you know a casino uh, a lot of them most of them basically all of them eventually fail right and by fail i mean they shut down now in general gaming has evolved a lot since atari back in what the 80s most games shut down nowadays right most games are live service in some way shape or form um, most games are not like allowed to live forever unless they're completely single player games, which a lot of them don't get made anymore now. But yeah, this is it for Marvel Future Revolution. Let's take, let's check out what they said here. The end of an era. We wanted to say thank you to our agents who have shown their love and support towards the game for so long. They started the game on August 21st, 2021, 25th, sorry. Uh, it feels like a long time ago, but then it doesn't feel like a long time ago at the same time. They're shutting down services on August 25th of this year. So exactly two years to the date of launch, this game is being gutted. Uh, in particular, it feels really bad to shut down the game on the anniversary. That's brutal. Uh, when I read that, I kind of got a bit of a shock because imagine Marvel Future Fight shut down on the Annie. Like the anniversary is the most hype time for the game. But then I realized that Marvel Future Fight the anniversary is the most hype time for the game because the game had time to grow and build and sort of uh, cultivate its player base. This game did not. Future Revolution did not have that chance. So anyways, we strive to exceed the expectations of our agents since launch, but now the adventures of Primary Earth Month come to an end. It's, it's really funny how these always read because they always read as basically like we had the best intentions, we tried our best, but we failed miserably. And there's not a lot of accountability here. There's not a lot of like, you know, what we did wrong. There's basically zero of like what we did wrong, uh, how we could have made the game better. You know, uh, to be to be fair to them, they probably worked really hard up to the launch of the game. But also to be fair in the, cri in the criticism, when they didn't get the um, reaction, I think, and when they didn't have the support immediately that they thought the game was going to have, I feel like the devs pulled the, like, they jumped out of the plane and they pulled the parachute so fast. Like, they bailed on this game so fast. It really did not have any kind of legs uh, to sort of weather uh, inconsistencies to weather the storm. You know, I think if a, it's crazy because this game obviously had a much, much, much larger budget than games released five to ten years ago, like Marvel Future Fight, right? This game had basically the best graphics you can expect on a mobile game. Even now, even two years later, the graphics on mobile games have not gotten better than Marvel Future Revolution. Over a hundred costumes for each character is bonkers, right? That's like the Diablo 4 levels of aesthetic customization. You had insanely high quality music that was even performed by an orchestra featuring member like featuring guitarists who had done music for Final Fantasy and like actual big name, you know, musicians. So the budget for this game must have been like two. I would say it's anywhere from two to like 10 times more than Marvel Future Fight was at launch. I could be wrong. Maybe they allocated too much of their their marketing budget for like actual advertising to that kind of stuff. I don't know. Um, but for me, the game was, was very, um, you know, had a, had a lot of love put into it at the beginning. So it's kind of scary to see something like that fall so fast and to fall, uh, like, and not only to fall so fast, but again, to not be supported after launch. Like they were basically banking on this being the number one game in the world and it wasn't. And then they basically just packed up their stuff and went home. Um, and I think that's not really... Like that, 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 that's part of the reason why the game is shutting down. Like g genuinely, I think the devs could have done a better job. Um, and I think the devs should have, you know, they should have had backup plans or they should have had like, 
alternative plans you know hey guys if we launch this game and it doesn't work out the way we're expecting you know instead of the hubris of like we've made the best game in the world <laughs> when we release this game the the players will be begging us to let them spend more money on this game you know like instead of that sort of like diluted psychosis that they maybe were under they should be like hey guys i think we've made a good game but in case we haven't right let's build in some contingency plans so that we can make really fast pivots into other things for this game right and that's that i think is the biggest problem right that's the biggest problem with this game is they had problems at launch and they took way too long to address them straight that that's what killed this game i in my opinion that's the number one thing this game that killed this game it's not about the customization it's not about how expensive things were those factors may have contributed to it the, the number of characters at launch the fact that you had to repeat the story every single with every single character and it gets really fucking boring uh, those things all contributed to the game's downfall and to the game's early demise for sure for sure but the thing that killed the game for sure 100 percent guaranteed is the fact that they took way too long they took way too long to make changes. They took weeks, months. It's it's un completely unacceptable these days. Players are way too impatient. Their attention spans are way too low. And they just, they don't have to wait. They don't have to wait for you, right? If your game is not good, they will just go to another game. Like, guys, Hogwarts Legacy released this year. Does that feel like it makes sense? No, since then we've gotten Breath of the Wild, we got Diablo 4, Starfield is coming out later, like there's been so many, and I'm probably missing another amazing game that came out this year, Jedi Survivor came out, like there, there's so many good games coming out, play, play, you know, gamers do not have, to, they don't have to have patience, they don't have to wait around for you to figure the game out, you have to have the game figured out as a dev, uh, like, you know, as a producer, or whatever, you guys have to have the game figured out before you launch or God forbid, at least when you launch, right? So yeah, in my opinion, I, I, rather than getting into the nitty gritty, like I know there's some obvious things like the story, the story thing having to be played over and over again. There are some obvious things that were really bad at launch. And to be fair, they did fix them eventually, but it took way too long, right? Like having that side area where you could grind levels instead of taking your characters through the story again, that was a really good thing. But the fact that they gated it to having you, you have to use tickets and you only get one hour per week or so, or like three hours per week or some dog shit like that. You know, they they basically so they released the game. It was flawed. They they saw the flaws and then rather than fix the flaws really quickly to retain the players, they took a long time to fix the flaws in order to monetize the flaws. And that was like that in and of itself is part of the, the mistake of taking too long to fix things. Um, but yeah, it's ultimately their own choice, how they do it. Um, and they were just, yeah, they were just, in my opinion, they were really stupid about it. Um, you, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. That's essentially the summary of, of what I'm saying right now. And the first impression of Marvel Future Revolution was it's not fun because it's too repetitive. It takes too long to get to the end game and it's too expensive to play. And all three of those factors working together is, a, you know, a great way to convince a player to just log out and play something else, you know. Um, and I think a game like Marvel Future Fight, for those of you wondering how it compares, I think Marvel Future Fight benefited a lot from being released eight years ago. Straight up, the people who played the game eight years ago who are still playing and sort of helping to, to, to keep the community alive and stuff. And it's not just me. There's a lot of you out there. Um, maybe you just comment once in a while on a Facebook group. Maybe you just talk to a few friends on Discord or you have a, an active alliance. All of these things seem meaningless, but they add up, right? Because you're talking to 10 people. This other person is talking to 20 people or 25. You've got an alliance with 40 people. That's 100, right? And then it keeps building on that. And that's how you have a sort of a stable player base, right? A stable player base not only obviously generates revenue for the game, but it shows the developers and, and their bosses that there's a lot of daily active users um, like logging in, which is good, right? Those metrics are good to keep the game uh, up and to keep funding for the game active. Uh, and then it also helps to draw other players in, right? When you go to any sort of forum or when you go to any sort of communication for the game and it seems really quiet, you're less likely to engage with the content, right? So Marvel Future Fight being released eight years ago 
uh, it was a more patient time. Players did not expect, you know, daily updates. By the way, guys, by the way, guys, like just to show you how serious I am and how serious this is, Diablo 4 already patched something. Uh, they already released a massive balance patch, nerfing Barbarian, nerfing Sorceress, uh, buffing Necromancer. Like they already did that. The game's been in early access for two days. This is the level of attention that players expect nowadays. It's 2023. We're paying you guys for these games, right? You're asking us to spend hundreds of dollars. Okay, if that's if that's the transaction, then you guys have to be on this shit 24 seven, right? It, it's not you taking a week to figure out that the PVP zone doesn't work and then taking another week to release a new balance to the PVP zone just so that you guys can market your stupid content and, and market your stupid uh, boxes that to sell in the shop for money, right? In those two weeks, you've lost me. I've gone to another game. I'm already playing it. Bye bye. No more Marvel Future Revolution, right? I'll take my money somewhere else. You know, late stage capitalism sucks for a lot of reasons. And frankly, this is one of them. Um, so, yeah, I really just think that, you know, if Marvel Future Fight was released now, it would crash and burn 100% because the devs take so, so fucking long to make changes to the game. But at this point, eight years into Marvel Future Fight, the players that are playing and have been playing and sort of dictate the flow of, of the community's reaction, they are patient, right? We are patient. We're like, yeah, we know they didn't buff this. Let's 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 wait a little bit longer. Like we waited six months for them to buff Storm and players were happy. If a game came out now and it took them six months to buff a character, people would be giving the middle finger and walking away. So, you know, you got to... It, it, it sounds crazy, but you kind of got to give yourselves a pat on the, on the back because your patience has been what allowed Marvel Future Fight to, you know, stumble and stumble and, and, and then build up to being able to be the game that it is now. Still flawed, 100%, but it's, it's absolutely a fun game and uh, it's, you know, it's allowed to take its time. But yeah, if any, if any, if any Netmarble devs are watching this, uh, pali Pali. That's basically, you know, that's basically the name of the game. You guys are way too slow. You guys need to get with the, you guys need to get with the, with the program. Um, and you guys need to push out updates fast. You have to have updates ready for the game. You have to have backup plans. You have to have contingencies. What if the players don't like this? What if the players don't like that? What if this is too hard? What if this is too easy? What if this is too long? What if this is too short? And then you have to have you have to have patches built for that shit. Like, just delay the launch of the game. You guys do this shit all the time anyways. Like, game launches don't mean anything anymore. Every game gets delayed. Every game's launch gets played with more than... I'm not even going to say. So, you know, just just figure it out. It's really... It, it can't be that hard. You guys are literally making millions of dollars. I know it's not the people. It's the company making millions of dollars. But yeah, I have no sympathy for Netmarble in this case. I have sympathy for the devs zero sympathy for the company you know it's it's uh you know this is a gargantuan failure i gotta be honest yeah, they they really should have they really should have knocked this one out of the park and they stumbled and then they cut their knee and then they looked around if anyone was watching and they started crying and making a big fuss and we all just said okay and turned around and walked home and then they were left by themselves so yeah they got to hold this massive L. They probably lost. They probably lost millions on this game. There's no way they recouped all their money. Actually, maybe they did recoup all their money. I don't know. That's the fucked up thing about mobile games is they cost. They can cost so much to play if you're like a dedicated whale that it's possible that a hundred whales, like a hundred whales who spent a grand, right? A hundred whales who spent a thousand dollars. Okay, never mind. A, a thousand whales who spent a thousand. No, a thousand whales who spent ten thousand dollars. That's what I wanted to say. That's, that's 10 million. That's all it takes, right? That's all it takes. So, and there's there's absolutely, by the, if, you think, if you think I'm crazy, there are absolutely people looking themselves in the mirror right now because they spent $10,000 on this game, 100%. And I'm sorry if you're one of them, that sucks. Uh, Reevaluate your the way you do your finances, unless you have like infinite money, whatever. But yeah, like crazy, absolutely crazy. So yeah, hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of Marvel Future Revolution biting the dust. Uh, and, and here's to four more years of Marvel Future Fight, baby. <laughs> mm. uh, vodka in the morning. All right. Take care, guys. Have a good day. Don't, uh, you know, be nice to each other.
Smash the like button if you enjoy the content. I'll see you guys later. Peace.